Okay, so the topic I chose today is video games. Um, the child and adult alike have been intrigued by video games ever since they were first created in 1958 and rose to popularity in the 70s. Well, I'm going to give a brief history of video games to explain how they have become such a prominent aspect of today's society. So, the first video game was created in 1958, and this was simply a two-player tennis game where you hit a ball back and forth over a net on a small computer monitor, similar to Pong, which was created in the 70s. In the 70s and 80s, as we see in Stranger Things Season 2, uh, arcades rose to popularity as kids and adolescents came to hang out with their friends and play a variety of video games. Uh, the first video game console was created in 1972, and this was called the Brown Box, later called the Magnavox Odyssey. And this allowed people to play a variety of games in, on their own TV in their own home. Um, in 1977, we have the Atari 2600, made by the Atari company, which created Pong. And this, unlike the Brown Box, held its video games on physical cartridges, as we see with the Nintendo Switch today. Um, also, it used uh, joysticks and buttons to allow you to play the games. In 1981, we have the what is considered to be the first three-dimensional video game called 3D Monster Maze. And this is where you try to get through a maze while running from what looks like a T-Rex. In 1983, the Japanese video game company called Nintendo pre presented its first video game console called the Nintendo Entertainment System, or NES for short. And this is similar to the Atari, where it held its video games on physical cartridges and brought in the D-pad and two buttons to allow you to play the games. Now, ever since the 80s throughout today, video game, video game companies have made improvement upon improvement to their games, consoles, and equipment. Today, we enjoy games that are highly realistic that have high, highly realistic graphics and consoles that allow you to play hundreds of games at any time, and controllers that are more complicated where the, it makes the gameplay more exciting. Now, obviously with these appealing advancements, a schism has arose between those who like video games and those who disapprove of video games. My mother, for one, is one of those who disapproves of video games. I remember the first time I played a video game it was a summer when I was younger. My brothers and I had just gotten back from scout camp and my dad came home with a box. I didn't know what it was, but when I saw the excitement on my brother's faces, I knew it must be something good. So my oldest brother and my dad hooked it up to the TV, and then I saw a menu flash on the screen with multiple vacant spots ready to, play, to display a different video game. This was the first time I saw the Wii, one of Nintendo's more modern consoles. And it came with Wii Sports, which I thoroughly enjoyed as a kid. And my father and my brothers and I would play for hours. I didn't know this at, my t at the time, but my mom was strongly against video games because she thought it would just lead to more fighting and less time outdoors. Of course she was right. My brothers, my brothers and I would fight over the dumbest things, such as who got to play, what game we were going to play, and what characters it would be. It also affected our social and family lives, as we spent hours upon hours playing video games. So this leads to the first question, what's the problem with video games? The main argument against video games is that they can make someone violent, especially first-person shooter games, which are one of the most popular games played today. Um, so. Several studies have shown that playing violent video games affects the part of the brain that controls emotion and rational thinking, and this is what scientists say leads the person to act unruly. So another argument against video games is that they make you less involved in important activities such as doing your homework, playing sports, and hanging out with friends. And this is obviously a valid argument as we see today. Lots of people choose to play video games rather than these important activities. And no parent wants their child to get poor grades because they choose to play video games rather than study, or to um, gain weight because they choose not to exercise, or to miss out on having fun with friends because they're playing video games instead. So a person with this mindset obviously thinks that video games are a distraction that only causes problems for the players. Now when there's an argument against something, there's always an argument for something. So there are people who like video games and enjoy to play them would advocate for video games saying that they can increase your mental health. Um, a study done, or published in the journal Plus One took 33 adults and divided them into three different groups. Um, the first group played Mario 64 for half an hour a day, five days a week for three months. The second group played, practiced the piano for the same amount of time. And the third group did neither of these activities. The results showed that the group who played Mario 64 um, had an improvement in their short-term memory and an increase of gray matter in their cerebellum and their hippocampus. The second group who played piano 
had an increase in the gray matter in their cerebellum and their prefrontal cortex. And the group who neither played Mario 64 nor piano actually showed a decrease in gray matter in the three areas of the brain that were examined. Another argument against video games, or for, sorry, for video games, is that they allow you to be, become more social. Um, most of the popular video games played today are multiplayer games, which means that multiple people are playing online on the same game, which allows you to meet new people who have something in common, which is video games, even if it's not face to face. Another way they allow you to become more social is games, is a lot of games nowadays allow you to play <coughs> with a group on the same screen. For example, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate allows up to eight players to play at the same time. So people with this mindset will see video games as a positive source of entertainment and say the opposite of what people against video games would say. But despite what you think about video games, there's something that we can all can agree on, which is playing too much video games can be a problem. But this is the same with anything. Eating too much food can be a problem, uh, getting too much exercise can be a problem, and doing too much homework can be a problem. Um, we should focus less on whether video games are beneficial or harmful, and focus more on playing in moderation. My mother and I would argue constantly about video games, as she would try to get me to stop playing video games, but I wanted to keep playing them. So the compromise we came up with is I would only play on the weekends so that she was happy because I was playing less. So I would encourage those who are against video games not to stop others from playing them, but to encourage them to play less. Because we know that too much of anything could be a problem, not just video games. Thank you.